welcome 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 you guys it is your girl brown skin exoticals and i'm back with another video for you guys today's video we're going to talk about the 50 minute panel <laughs> i watched with cynthia g bashing biracials mixed people and exotical folk you guys this woman is our biggest fan um <laughs> thank you thank you so much to cadillac kadifi and racial um if you guys want to go and watch the video for yourselves, he put the link under my video, MLS in the media versus dark skin ADOS in the video. Just go click the link and there it is. But I suggest you pop a pill of Advil and take pauses every so often. You're going to need it because it's Cynthia G. Quick trigger warning before I start today's video. In case you haven't noticed, this video is 30 minutes long. So one, that should show you enough in itself. But I have to remind people for the millionth time. This channel is not for dark-skinned black people. This is not a space for you to comment, share your opinion, talk about how you think biracials and mixed people are, and that if we do not stand for ourselves as mixed race people, exoticals, MGM, the golden folk, this is what happens. Because this video, this panel is not like years ago, you guys. They made this literally two days ago, and there's already over 11,000 views. 11,000 people who share the same anti-mixed race, anti-biracial, anti-multiracial rhetoric. And this negatively affects us mixed race folk. They can just turn off their computers and laptops, but we have to live with the repercussions and the consequences of their false doctrine and their false pathologies, as Cynthia G will say. So Cynthia G, um, as y'all may know or may not, is the black woman on the top left corner excuse me, top right corner, and the woman on the top left corner and the cheetah print, the dark skin woman, her name is Tony Bryan. Both of these women are YouTube content creators, aka biracial experts. Hear and note the sarcasm in my voice. Then you have three mixed race slash light skin biracial women. Top one on the top middle is the host and on the bottom is mona lisa johnson who is a criminal justice activist and last but certainly not least naacp image award nominee crystal jasmine now let's start off this by saying how cynthia g started off this video and again not even 15 minutes into the video cynthia g could not help herself but to talk about biracial people because she knows about us so well you guys <laughs> who knows more about biracial people and mixed race folks than cynthia g the woman with no degree no credentials and nothing but sitting down in her basement and talking about us for hours and hours on end because she literally has nothing better to do with her time she starts right off the gate by saying I don't see why biracial and mixed people can't just identify themselves as biracial and mixed race. Then she goes on to do what she does best, and that is talk about the mixed experience without statistics, without credentials, and without being mixed herself. She says most biracials are raised by single mothers, mostly white. What? <laughs> and that the women, the white women who are raising are basically raising and molding the minds of black women and that a white woman, a white parent can't give a black child their black identity. But I thought we were mixed, Cynthia. And this is where, again, you have to read between the lines and you see that they tell on themselves. They don't have a set definition of blackness, so they will push us in and out of the black community and they'll call us mixed one second. They'll call us biracial one second. They'll call us black another because they don't have a definition of it, because they want to be able to claim all of our accomplishments in history, in the media, in literature, things of that nature, but then say that we're the ones confused when they can't make up their mind. It's the craziest thing. And the best part is they get so upset. And Cynthia G even did this in the panel when this light-skinned woman, Mona Lisa Johnson, talked about her experience. She said she was conflicting herself and saying one minute she was proud to be mixed, another she was proud to be black, even though Cynthia G did the same thing. Now, as far Mona Lisa's and Crystal's experiences, I'm gonna talk a bit about those. Mona Lisa Johnson, again, 55-year-old, light-skinned biracial woman, bottom left, 
she is a light-skinned biracial who was like the biracials that Cynthia believes most biracials and mixed folk are like. She had racist grandparents who said, I will not do anything with that N-word baby. And she herself grew up in America during the 60s. She literally had to select Negro on her birth certificate. That was just the time that country was in during those years. Um, she says personally that most of the discrimination she faced as a biracial woman, as a mixed race woman, was at the hand of dark skinned black women. And she thinks it may be a bit of black on black jealousy, but I will do you one better. I think it is a black on mixed women jealousy. And we're going to call it B, hashtag BBMW, which is hashtag black on mixed women jealousy. And even if I miss said it in this video, I'm going to get it right in the comment section, you guys. I'm tired. <laughs> And when she said that, both Cynthia G and that dark skinned women were taken back a bit. But literally, you could see the light skin, the other light skinned girl, just nodding her head in agreement and agreeing with everything this mixed woman was saying because she was speaking facts. The same mixed woman, Mona Lisa Johnson, even talked about another experience where she said a dark skinned black woman would not let her get her driver's license until she checked Negro on her driver's license and her certificate. Because again, they don't like it when we identify ourselves as mixed. They want us to be dependent on them because they are dependent on us. Cynthia G even told on herself when she admitted later on in the video that if a biracial person with a non-black parent or grandparent with a different phenotype is black, what does that make her? You guys, these women depend on us for validation. They want what we have. They expect how we are treated in society to trickle down to them. And when it doesn't, they say we're privileged, which Cynthia G also said in this. And when she said that, as they stood, these two mixed women weren't having any of it. Now, bottom right corner, Crystal James Jasmine. This is a beautiful exotical who has a Nigerian father and an Italian slash from the Bahamas mother. And we, we call people from the Bahamas is Bahin. So she's part African, part European, part West Indian, and part Punjabi, as she says. Beautiful mix, beautiful woman. And she says that she agrees with Mona Lisa on the black on biracial, black on mixed woman jealousy. We'll put that hashtag down in the below. Please use that if you make any videos or if you want to comment under the video. And she also says that when Cynthia G said in the video, the panel, that biracial and mixed women don't face discrimination and that we aren't discriminated and that we don't like and respect black women that we don't love black women we don't care for them that she found that offensive because we do face discrimination as she said from both sides and i completely agree and i'll do even one better it's they want us to love them because they don't know how to love themselves and they get so irate with us mixed and us exotical biracial multiracial people because we have worse circumstances than these black women do again we get twice the backlash they do we get it from both sides white and black or whatever your mixture is but we still do more in our lives with them we're still more effective we're still in a better place in society in this country of america and around the world because that's how mixed people are these mixed women talk about their experiences, but they still have success that makes you feel like, oh, they have privilege. No, they work their asses off for this. But again, black women will sit back and expect a knight in shining armor to come and rescue them from the problems that they created. Mixed women will have to deal with the repercussions of racist monoracial folk, white, black, Asian, whatever and still make better circumstances for ourselves and our own people because that's who we are as mixed race people. And another thing Cynthia G also said, what she said was, why don't you identify as white? Why don't you identify with your other parts of your mixture? Crystal Jasmine, again, bottom right, says that she does not want to identify herself as white and she doesn't have to 
that her grandfather on her mother's side, so again, that same mother who is part Italian, part from the Bahamas, her father was black man who was a black panther. So her mother was that same proud pro-black type biracial mixed woman. So again, she was raised with this whole black is beautiful confidence that bothered Cynthia G and you could hear it because believe it or not, Cynthia G the whole time, no surprise to us, was bashing these two mixed women the whole time. And she, even Mona Lisa talking about her experience with the driver's license and how in her 20s when she was a young person that that black, dark skinned black woman wouldn't let her get her license until she checked that yes, she is the black person on the license. When she was older, meaning around now, she's almost in her 60s, you guys. She literally says now that she went to a doctor's appointment recently and that she saw on there multiracial and she was so happy to check the box because she sees and she acknowledges that younger generations have paved the way and i'm so curious you guys please leave a comment or an email at brownskin exoticals at gmail and let me know if you are an older exotical or you're an exotical from across the sea or in a different state how your experiences has been in the states or with racism because i'd love to hear and i'd love to make a video about that and of course keep it anonymous if you would like and this mixed woman, Mona Lisa Johnson, said how she was so happy to see that multiracial is being seen and recognized as its own group, that we have our own statistics, we have our own demographic. And believe it or not, I'm so happy for her. And that made me so happy to hear. But again, anytime us mixed race, us light skin, us golden women are happy Dark-skinned black women, black people, black women especially, come here trying to rain on our parade. And Cynthia said, oh, you're conflicting and you're contradicting yourself by saying that at one point you were happy to be mixed, but another point you're saying you were forced to pick black. And of course, because mixed women were built different, because again, we've been bullied and harassed and assaulted so much, we won't let people do it to us as adults. So she said, no, Cynthia G, I did not. You're taking what I said out of context and you're doing it on purpose. Well, she didn't say that, but I'm saying it for her. Cynthia G was doing it on purpose. She said when she was in her 20s, she was forced to select black. She wanted to select mixed, but that wasn't allowed. That wasn't a thing back in the 60s. Well, 80s, because she was in her 20s. But now she has the choice and she's proud to do that. And funny enough, she literally says that we mixed race biracial exotical peoples um we go berserk basically and try to force black people to acknowledge that we are black and acknowledge our black identity but then don't have the smoke for our other parts of our mixture white asian whatever and she continued to speak falsely about the mixed race and again like i've said and we've seen and we've videos and experiences in real life as well as celebrity world when kiki wyatt out and openly said that she was a mixed race woman the black community was in a roar they were so ferocious they were so upset which is crazy because you think a woman again that fair skin and that light skin would be able to outwardly be able to express her mixture because she looks mixed race because she is you can tell when you see her but they said oh nobody wants to be black anymore why it gotta be mixed even when mixed people do something simple like make youtube channels or put curly headed jaden or light skin jaden or anything to do with our identity it bothers the black community so that's why a lot of biracials feel like they can't identify as biracial mixed race and as a browner and more quote afro passing black passing exotical mixed person they definitely feel a lot more protective of you god forbid you're blasian god forbid you have brown skin or dark skin they're gonna feel like well you're not light skin so you're not mixed but then you still tell mixed people they can't be mixed if they're light skin you won't let anybody be mixed. <laughs> like they're not mixed, but they feel like they're the mixed police and they can identity police us and tell us who we are and who we are not. Because again, like I've said, the black community, especially black Americans, I can't speak for Africans, West Indians, Europeans, because I don't have that experience. But as someone who's grown up around black Americans, 
they really have a loose definition of blackness because well let's be honest they don't have any definition of blackness that's why they hate when us mixed and exotical people try to give ourselves an identity because black americans don't have one they are mixed race themselves some of them but they'll just deny it but then tell mixed race people oh you can't say you're mixed oh you can't say you're black you can't tell me who i am as a mixed race person probably blank period and funny enough um mona lisa also goes on in the video to talk about her parent her grandparents who are racist and said i quote i don't want to raise and we're babies and i don't know if i'm repeating myself you guys i'm literally trying to calm myself down but it's just so heartbreaking to see how much one person can go through and how much abuse us exoticals have to take and i really do feel for lighter skin exoticals because y'all get bullied even jasmine guy who was the beautiful light-skinned biracial woman from different worlds talked about how she would get bullied in the black community and when light-skinned women and mixed women talk about our abuse at the hand of these dark-skinned black women they have a fit when we say as this mixed race woman did mona lisa johnson or even mention that there might be some jealousy they get upset and they get in their feelings about it and cynthia g literally said oh no one's jealous of you what are you talking about that's gaslighting she's gaslighting but again these women will use any word in the book to stop themselves from getting any type of accountability because that's how they are it's worked with them for black men and they'll just blame black men for everything as if they didn't create anything and speaking of black men let me switch gears a little bit and talk more about the dark-skinned black woman in the top left whose name is tony bryan as i've said earlier and this woman is not as militant as cynthia g is but she does not hide the fact of how male identified she is and neither does cynthia and i'm going to talk about that so as far as Tony Bryan is concerned, she says, and I quote, mixed women benefit from colorism. Again, with no statistics, no facts, no proof. She says that she doesn't tell mixed and biracial people how to identify because she herself is not mixed or biracial, which if most multi, if most monoracial, excuse me, people did that, the mixed race community wouldn't have a problem with monoracials. But it's because everyone wants to tell us who we are instead of letting us tell them who we are we have an issue because I don't tell you who you are. Don't tell me who I am. Point blank period. It's that simple. And this dark skinned black girl talks about how dark skinned black boys in her class wanted the pretty Dominican girl, the mixed race girl, the light skin with curly hair and light eyes. Now, Let's notice and talk about how all these women's point of reference are the dark skinned black boys in their middle school and high school. They're not looking at real life. They're not looking at modern day. They're not even looking at statistics. This is just her looking at the world from the reference of middle school. The world is not your middle school. And even if that is your experience, how is that our fault? Because here's the thing. You'd think these women would be happy with all the amount of quote unquote brads and Asian men and Latino men who love these dark-skinned black girls you think they should be happy by now right because oh we all these white men are treating us better all these asian men these latino men all these different other groups of men are treating us different so then why are you still whining colorism why are you still crying featureism texturism why are you still so obsessed and worried about what the biracial and mixed race woman is doing if you have all these different races and you're swirling and you're happy now and you're divesting if you're divesting, why are you so divested and invested in what we mixed race and black men are doing? Cynthia G finishes up the podcast. And again, I said I'd go all over the place. So bear with me, you guys. Cynthia G finishes up the video by saying she is, and I quote, a channel has a channel that talks about the relationship between black men and black women and promotes self-love. First off, she told two lies in one sentence, which I didn't know you could do that. Um... She doesn't talk about the relationship between black men and black women. She bashes black men for the entertainment of black women, as do black men for the entertainment of other black men. They do it to each other. That's none of my business. And promotes self-love for dark skin and black women. Name one video you guys can think of off the top of their head where she is talking about self-love and how to love yourself. She's not. She's making videos of saying, this is who black men really choose. She has like 60 videos talking about who black men, quote unquote, really choose and how they choose fat white women and unattractive white women. 
let's be honest these women don't use statistics but they'll be so jealous of white mixed and all other types of ethnicities and races of women because again we're feminine we're beautiful i get it and i see the jealousy but it's to the point where it's literally causing us mental physical and even sometimes not to be triggering but even sexual harm because again we have to face the repercussions it is mixed women who have a higher percentage of rape than black women and that's because of all of this stuff that goes on with the hate from dark and black women to us i've had literal emails as long as my arm of mixed women pouring their heart out to me about how they were sexually assaulted by a black man or a black woman most cases a black woman so because it was another woman no one did anything about it i myself as well as other youtube creators who i know and love have been physically or sometimes even sexually including myself assaulted by these darker skinned people and now we're trying to heal and glue together the pieces that they break and it's funny because we just want our own space we don't want revenge most of us just want our own space and our space is to be solitude and there to be exclusive but these women and these people want to tell us who we are and who we are not and that's infuriating and I just loved as I watched this video despite Cynthia G's incompetence and lack of statistics as well as anything sound these mixed women would not let her have the time of day they literally stood their grounds like queens don't get me wrong, um, I did find, being fully honest with you guys, the host, which is again the mixed woman in the top left, top middle, excuse me, I found her black scent and her AAV forced and I found it annoying. She did it on purpose to try to make Cynthia G as well as that other dark skinned black woman comfortable. But even that dark skinned black woman admitting that she wanted black men's validation and she didn't say it, but it was more what she didn't say. And you can tell that this issue has nothing to do with oppression. Not once did Cynthia G say that light-skinned women or mixed women get better cars than black women, better houses, better marriages, better careers. She never said anything of this nature because colorism, featureism, texturism is not oppression. They are not oppressed in the country of America. They're able to have representation. Even that dark skinned black woman saying we don't have representation in the media. That's bull. Real Housewives of Atlanta, Real Housewives, the franchise is mostly dark skinned black women. Female rap, dark skinned black women. They have their own media representation, BET, dark skinned black women. They will pedestalize us because they want to be us. They'll call us black when they want our success to trickle down to them and when it doesn't trickle down to them because that's not how it works you only get what you work for and you don't leech off of what we have and expect the same result then they say oh you have light skin privilege oh you have benefit from texturism featureism and you want to have them just say all types of crazy things about light skin women and people and it's funny because they will deny with everything in them their obvious jealousy and to the point where even when you see like the swirlers and the divesters, their hate for mixed women while trying to make mixed women makes no logical sense to me whatsoever. Um, This entire video, and I know I'm getting a little off topic, you guys, bear with me, but a lot of this was very telling of this toxic relationship we have with dark skinned black women. And it's never going to get better, you guys. And my best way of how to fix it and my only advice I can give other exoticals mixed race people biracials is you have to fend for self like you don't feel bad for these women don't feel any pity or any sympathy don't try to be a light-skinned savior and think that you can earn their respect don't have that type of stockhold syndrome and that try like that will that desire to try to please and satisfy their low insecurities because at this point it's demonic when you say i'm fine aborting babies because i don't like the male counterparts that let's be honest they may they're like that because of each other but again darks and black women black women in general don't hold themselves accountable it is always somebody else's fault that they are where they are and we all whether it's me multiracial movement light skin mind um all these other amazing mls channels and platforms that you should definitely go subscribe and check out 
we've all seen videos and clips and we all show evidence of how they really act. But again, they'll always deflect. And even in the comment section, you see it. Oh, all races of women can be bad mothers. All races of women can be bald. All races of women wear wigs and weave. They'll never hold themselves accountable. And this live stream showed that. And if I thought, if you thought the panel itself was bad enough, the comment section is worse. There was one comment section, I forgot to screenshot it, but it was like, oh, as a black woman, I was offended that you said, why does it even matter? Um, Mona Lisa Johnson earlier on in the podcast, when she says, does it really like even matter? Like it's not, it matters, it's a big deal, but it's like, y'all just fight over petty stuff and the black community does. Because like I've said in my three P's of the black community video, the biggest problems in this community, black Americans specifically, is parenting, poverty, and the third P, I forget, because again, I'm tired. This has been 30 minutes. I didn't even know I could talk this long, you guys. But like um, Mona Lisa Johnson said, and so clearly articulated, the black on mixed women jealousy, and I'm going to put hashtag B, black women on mixed jealousy. Give me a second, you guys. Black on mixed women jealousy. Hashtag B, M, W J black on mixed women jealousy and I'm gonna write that down you guys it's good because literally when she said it the other light skinned girl was shaking her head in agreement and I was screaming at my phone you guys um we go through so much as exoticals and that's not even to talk about what exotical men and mixed and light skinned men have to deal with and how they are literally thrown into manhood at youth as children because they're so aesthetically pleasing, it infuriates monoracial people. The three biggest things I took away from this panel, although I got a lot of things, besides Cynthia G's incompetence, is there will never, ever be a healthy relationship between dark-skinned black women, black women, and mixed-race women, because there will always be competition. Two, these women will never hold themselves accountable for their jealousy, and that three, these women will not acknowledge the fact that they are where they are in society because of themselves, not some unforeseen force like colorism or futurism, but because they will always compare themselves to women who are working. The two exoticals on the bottom, the two mixed women, they've done something with their life. They have literally faced 10 times the oppression of these two black women who just sit on their ass and make YouTube channels. And I have things I do outside of YouTube for mixed and light skinned women, petitions, voting, things of that nature. And really, if you are a mixed and exotical person, you should care about mixed and exotical issues, voting and speaking up, signing petitions, things of that nature outside of YouTube, of course. But these women, their whole activism, as they say, so to speak, Cynthia G, excuse me, and the other dark skinned black woman is just talking on YouTube and that's it. Their whole idea, as Cynthia G said, she this is how she literally described her channel, you guys. This is hilarious to me. Was she said that she talks about the relationship between black men and black women and promotes self-love of black women. Let's talk about the first half of that lie. Um <laughs> she doesn't talk about the relationship between black men and black women. She bashes black men for the entertainment and the enjoyment of bitter, single, basic, burnt bummy black women and yes i call them every single one of these names i said what i said <laughs> and self-love for black women i literally looked at my phone and discussed because i'm like you've never talked about how to level up for black women none of them do even cynthia g mind the noise in the background who i saw like maybe two or three videos talking about femininity on her channel again we saw a picture of her in real life she needs to take her own advice and um, just go do something with her face because it's an issue, you guys. But the one thing that caught my attention and that made my heart happy, last thing in closing, was when the light-skinned mixed woman on the bottom left, Mona Lisa Johnson, said that she now feels much more comfortable in her mixture and she embraces herself as a mixed-race woman. And that when she was younger, she felt like she was betraying her family by saying she was mixed. And as 
someone who just now recently a couple months ago half a year ago started acknowledging my mixed race heritage and learning about my mixture i'm gonna make a video talking about that in the next one for all my mls women who just now realize their mix or start acknowledging it